bless your hearts to all of the saints and those that are listening. We praise God for you. Thank you for putting a demand on us that we are dedicated and we know that it's God's work, but we understand that if you don't put a demand on it to hear the word and want to hear the word, then we'll have nobody to talk to and nobody to minister to. So we are grateful and thankful for your listening ear. Listening ear. We hope that these messages and these teachings are being a blessing to you and your family, uh, to your personal life, and even to friends around you. To those of you who have not accepted Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior, now is a good time. All you have to simply do is ask God to come into your life by way of Jesus Christ, recognizing that you are a sinner in need of God's forgiveness, that you have sinned, and that you believe that God has raised Jesus from the dead the third day. Jesus died on the cross for your sins, and you accept him as your Savior, not, not just to be saying words, but with the mindset that you're going to turn. Repentance means turning from wrong things and things that are ungodly to the right things and allowing Jesus Christ to be Lord over your life, leading you, guiding you, directing you, talking to you, you developing a relationship with him so much so to the intimacy is, is at a level to where when you hear his voice, you will obey him. This is a good time to invite Christ into your life and let him rule. And then he will open up your understanding through his word and through different situations. He will help you. He will keep you. He will deliver you. He'll heal you. <laughs> he'll teach you. He'll cause you to prosper. You'll be on the winning side. And he will also use you for his glory. Today I want to talk to you and kind of move forward from what we were teaching last week about the demonstration of agape love. Over in Ephesians chapter 5, we're going to start at verse 20. And I want you to see that in order for the relationship that God wants a husband and wife to have, in order for that relationship to happen like it's supposed to or happen according to Scripture, a God paid love is going to have to be in the midst. There's no way we can be the husbands we need to be or the wives we need to be without allowing unconditional love to operate in our lives. And so when I talk about the love that the husband has for the wife, that's unconditional. That's a God paid love. That's the same type of love that Jesus had for us when he died on the cross. And so we, wanna, we want you to bear that in mind as we're, as we're teaching this. Verse 20 says, Always give thanks for everything to our God and Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so when we're having conversations with one another, with family members, hold some grateful, thankful conversations. Make sure that you talk about how good God is. And not only just God, we need to thank one another <laughs> uh, for each other. As I said uh, last week, you know, in our home, we have practice. If we get something or do something for one another, we say thank you. We say, would you do such and such, please? In other words, we act with one another just like we would act outside of the house. And that's how you come to the, to the uh, habits of not having to uh, pretend. And you pra practice what's right when nobody's watching. And when other folks don't see you, practice that. So once you're out, you just do what you do. You, you do what you practice, and it won't be a strain, and you won't have to be uh, between, uh, you know, pretending and, and so on and so forth. Notice verse 21. It says, honor Christ by submitting to each other. Now, we have not gotten to role play yet. We're still talking about Christian families, husband and wife, children, uh, siblings, and so on and so forth. We're talking about the fact that the way we respect Jesus Christ is by submitting to each other. That means by giving in to, okay, we've got to give in to each other. Can't be what we think, what we want all the time. Yielding to. 
I know I have this idea, I have this plan, but right now I'm going to put that on pause and I'm going to see what my child says. I'm going to see what my wife says. I'm going to see what my husband says. Remember, we are to treat one another in our family relationship just like we would treat another saint at church or at a conference or at a Pentecostal rally uh, or, or so forth. We must yield. So when we say submitting to, we're saying giving into, yield to, surrender to. We have to surrender ourselves and offer ourselves to each other. In other words, before we can carry out individual role play assignments, because that's what the next verses are going to be talking about. It's going to be individual role play assignments. Before we can carry out these assignments outlined in these next few verses, we must commit ourselves to becoming best friends. Okay? And that's the key. If you don't get anything out of this message, I need husband and wives to understand that when you have developed the ability to become best friends, then everything else is going to be kind of easy. I hope that you were best friends before you got married. I hope one of the reasons why you got married is because you, you, you love being around each other, uh, you had a good time, you made each other laugh, you just, you know, just had a good time together. And you would talk to each other and you would tell each other things that you wouldn't tell anybody else. I hope, I hope, and, and, and a lot of times, and, and some of us, particularly in my case, you know, I just love being around First Lady and uh, we just, we just, I just love being around her. I met her uh, when she was singing and we were singing together and um, just, just enjoyed being around, enjoyed the conversation, enjoyed as we played games and we fellowship with other people, just enjoyed being around her. And so that grew in, in, into a, a serious relationship. Uh, can, you marry, <laughs> can you imagine being married to somebody you don't want to be around? Uh, we, and, and so I, I'm hoping, and, and I know, you know, it, it may have grown to that point, but it didn't start off that way in a lot of our relationships. But we have to make sure that we get verse 21 down in our hearts and spirits, that we've got to respect, honor Christ, Okay, by submitting to each other. That's giving into each other, yielding, surrendering, and, and offering ourselves. And so the question is, because we must commit ourselves to becoming best friends. The question is, how do you do that? How do you do that? And the answer is by giving in to our own personal desires. Yielding to the needs of the other being in compliance with one another through a agape love that is self-giving and self-sacrificial kind of love. So we're saying in order to become best friends, then we got to give up the right for the wrong, so to speak. We have to give up. See, when you're, when you're, when you're being friends with someone, you are helping them and empowering them to open up, to talk, to be free, to express themselves. Uh, you even want to help them do some things that they like to do. You know, you want to talk about the things that they like to talk about. Um, if there's a sacrifice, if there's something that's urgent that you feel like you want to do or need to do, you put that on hold, you table that, because you want to bring the best out of the individual that you, that you will. You want to bring the best out of your best friend. And then best friends means that that you are now vulnerable. So that means that the things that you feel emotionally and, and, and the things that are psychological, psychologically heavy and they're strenuous and it's something that you really don't want to talk about, you're on edge, you can do that with your best friend. Because, you, in other words, you can be vulnerable, you can tell secrets and all of this stuff, and your best friend not what? Judge you. They just sit there, they listen to you, you know, they give you advice, but they have wisdom. They know when to give you advice. But most of the time, they just sit there and listen and just let you just, 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 just talk and just kind of air out and, and, and be free. That's what best friends do. And then best friends are, are not looking to, you know, pay back. <laughs> you don't pay your best friend back for something they maybe done, did to you or, you know, you got hurt and so on and so forth, and you don't file stuff away. You know, we file, I'm going to put this in my file because I'm going to use it later on you. 
because you hurt me or you said something I didn't like. You know, that, that, that's not how best friends operate. Remember, it's an agape type love. It's self-giving and self-sacrificial. A man of many companions. This is what Proverbs 18, 24 says. It says, a man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Look at it. And that's what should happen in, in the marriage relationship. Becoming best friends in marriage means that we must become sticky friends. All right. The word used in Proverbs 18, 24 for sticks is the same word used in Genesis chapter 2, verse 24 for cleaving. All right. Remember the scripture says, for this cause a man shall leave, that means depart, from his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they shall become what? One flesh. All right. For this cause shall a man, we're talking about sticky friends, we're talking about leaving and cleaving. I wonder why he said, <laughs> it's, it's amazing here, for this cause a man shall leave. So the scripture is putting a demand on the man that He's going to have to leave his father's house and become uh, his, he become a leader and a leader and a guider uh, in his marriage relationship with his wife and his family. It says, for this cause shall a man leave, depart from his father and his mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. You're leaving the, the comfort of a family relationship. You're not saying... I'm not going to ever think about you again. I'm ever, not going to ever talk to you again, <laughs> okay? Uh, I'm not going to be there for you. You are saying, as far as authority, my authority and my influence with you, your authority over me, your influence over me ceases now. What are we talking about? We're not, we're not talking about that your parents can't advise you anymore. We're not saying that they can't talk to you and tell you some things. But we're saying at the end of the day, even after they talk to you and tell you things and whatever they do for you, at the end of the day, the man is responsible for making decisions. And he is to cut off the sticky relationship and the cleaving relationship he has with his parents, that bond has to be cut off, and now it has to be redone with his wife. And so he and his wife now has to become one flesh, okay? So Matthew's 19 in the Living Bible, verse 4, it says, Don't you read the scriptures? He replied, this is Jesus talking. He said, In them it is written that at the beginning... God created man and woman. Verse 5 through 6, it says, And that a man should leave his father and mother and be forever united to his wife. Now, a lot of times we're not just, you got to remember now, we're not just talking about leaving out of a house and being in a, living in a house with your parents and being in a house with your wife or your husband. Okay? Psychologically, emotionally, financially, <laughs> And the list go on and on and on. What you had with your parents in those areas will stop. And now you're one with your wife. So guess what you got to do? You got to plan together. You got to talk about finances. You got to talk about um, big purchase decisions. You got you to talk about what you're going to do and what you're not going to do and where you're going to be. Now, now you're accountable to one another. You know, I remember when, you know, if you left the house, especially if you was driving a vehicle, you had to tell your parents where you were going, who you were going to be with, how long you were going to be there, and when you were, were going to come back. Okay. Now you don't have to do that with your parents, but you have to do that with your mate. Mm -hmm. I know some of y'all thought y'all were free. But no, no. See, you got to understand the word one flesh. One flesh means that you have two companies merging together. And those companies, they have their own, before they merge, they have their own 
policies and procedures and way of doing things. And they have their own problems and issues and baggage and things that they've gotten over and levels that they have grown to. Each one of those companies separately have gone through that. Now the company has to come together and operate for the good. And somebody, one of those companies, has to be the lead. You have to have a, that's why in partnership you have a, you have a, a person who's manager or CEO and then you have a silent partner because you can't have two leaders in a company. So when the companies come together, somebody has to, to, to lead. And God has ordained that the man lead, that he's the head of the company. But the company, but he has to have enough wisdom and enough um, intuition and godliness and patience and love, unconditional love, to make sure that when he and when his company and her company come together, that they can come together as one. And so you have to be able to iron out a lot of things and fix a lot of stuff and make adjustments and redo policies and do amendments and so on and so forth, because now you're becoming one flesh. Okay. Now remember, not only is the man leaving his mom, mother and father, but the woman, the wife, she's leaving her mother and father too. And there are so many things that that we have gone through in our life coming up that has made us who we are, starting from DNA to habits to bad stuff to good stuff to experiences to exposures. All of this stuff uh, has made us the company that we are. Now we've got to come and join with another company. So if I got problems and issues and baggage and slack and lack, I'm going to bring that into a, 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 the relationship or another company. And if if, if, if I don't fix that stuff, it's going to cause, uh, it's, 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 it's going to be a head-on collision. That's why it's so important. And I want to talk to those who are single and young people who are not married yet. That's why it's so important that you spend time developing a relationship and understanding who you are in Christ Jesus. You've got to understand um, the things that you're supposed to do. You've got to understand who you are as far as how you operate and how you think and how you process stuff and you got to develop your skills and you have to develop your spirit man you can't let your spirit man run wild because you're single you can't just do anything because you're single you can't just say well you know I don't have the bills I don't have all this responsibility you better be getting yourself together you better be disciplining yourself training yourself uh, to save money to have discipline and to get up out of the bed because one day you're going to have to go to work. They have discipline to, to take care of your, your, your stuff, your car, your house, okay? All of this stuff, you've got to, and, and then that's just natural stuff. You've got to learn how to use wisdom and, and, and think and make good decisions and not be selfish and think about, you know, your mom and dad are going to take care of you the rest of your life. That ain't going to happen. I don't care how good they are and how much money they have and how much convenience you have. One of these days, 50, 100 years from now, you're going to wake up and you're going to be on your own. You're going to have to make your own decisions. And, and so let's, let's, let's come on over in the, in the spirit realm. And so you're going to have to know Christ Jesus for yourself. You're going to have to know how to allow the word to come in and wash you and make you whole and help you. Uh, and, 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 and you're going to have to know how to use the word and allow the word to come in and plug in and help in some of those areas of deficiency, some of those areas that you don't have. Maybe you grew up uh, different from others. Maybe you exposed this stuff uh, different from others. You've got to allow the word of God to make you whole in a lot of areas because when these two companies come together, um, it, it's depending on your solidness. It's depending on your wholeness. The wholeness of the company, when it comes together with another company, is going to determine the success of that one company coming together and moving forward. And so what I'm saying is each individual got to make sure that they are a whole person. And if you're not, you got to work on it. And I know here, here, herein is the dilemma. A lot of people are already married and they got all kind of issues and stuff personally that they brought in from the, from the other company. And they're trying, to work, they're trying to work through it. They're trying to work through it. They're trying to prosper. They're trying to grow. They're trying to move forward. But, 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 but they're having problems because uh, when they were individual companies, they were all over the place. And they had a lot of deficiency. And they were losing revenue. 
and they had broken policies and procedures and they were just slopping it up in some areas. And then other areas, they, they, they were just blind. They were ignorant. They were in darkness about. Either it wasn't demonstrated, they didn't learn, just, just a whole lot of things. And so what we have to understand is the idea is to become one flesh because the Bible says where there's two or three gathered in his name, he's in the midst. The Bible says if any two touch in agree as believing anything in my name, I'm going to come down and do it for them. But if you have a spirit of division and if you are, are not whole in your personal life, God's not going to see you as one. He said they, they, they married, but they still two individuals. And right now I can't help them. Now they're being blessed, but I can bless them a whole lot better if they merge together. And so you have to understand when the Bible talks about submitting to one another, that's being brothers and sisters in the Lord. That's being able to get along. That's being able to be best friends. That's being able to complement one another and come together and act as one entity and one flesh. Okay? Now, with the, you, we go on to the next verses and the next scripture because the idea is, is that you have the submitting to one another in place and you're doing that. Because if you're not doing that, you can forget about loving your wife and wife submitting to the husband. Wife ain't thinking about submitting to you if you're not doing yielding yourself and surrendering yourself okay and giving of yourself all right so let's jump back into this are we good so far i'm trying i'm trying to keep this uh decent y'all know i can i can really get into some things w with this and so we we understand here that verse five through six says, and that a man should leave his father and mother and be forever united to his wife the two shall become one no longer two, but one. No longer two, but one. Well, we, 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 we think different. You better learn how to think alike. Well, you know, we just have different, you know, different opinions. You better learn how to have the same opinion. Well, you know, I like what I like and she like what she like. You better leave that alone and get together on the things that you like and can, and can agree on and can do together and so on and so forth. OK, here is here is a secret. If you practice working on the things or should I say in being engaged in the things that you can do together and build that the stuff that you are not together on will soon fade into the background and you have more that you agree on and do together than you than you have not. OK, and that's how it works. The, the division continues to fade in the background. The togetherness and oneness be, begin or continues to increase. And before you know it, you're talking alike. You're thinking alike. Folks see you and say, is this your sister? Is this your brother? Because you've been together so long, you start looking alike. You talk, you talk alike. You, you, you reason alike. You know, if somebody talk to you, they ain't needing them talking to your wife. They just talk to your wife because your wife going to do the same thing you just talked about. That's one thing. And if they're questioning uh, your God, your wife going to tell them the same thing you would tell them about God. And, so, and that's how, and, and, and it grows. And you never get to a point to where you have it made. We always have to do maintenance on our relationship. I don't care how long you've been married. And I don't care what you've been exposed to. And I don't care how great the relationship is going and how much unconditional love you have practiced. You still don't have it made. Why? Because we're in these bodies and these bodies still are selfish. We're in this world and demons and devils are constantly trying to divide us. They are constantly trying to make us uh, 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 fight one another, be in disagreement, hide from one another, have secrets, have all of this crazy stuff. And then let me tell you about the saints of the living God. Let me tell you about the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, we really have to be careful because we are supposed to be represent. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. We're supposed to be representing Christ and the church. And the world can't get themselves together because in the kingdom of God, they see two companies fighting all the time. They see two companies, not one company. They see husband and wife and they be like, why would I want to get married? Is they acting like that? Oh, man, I, I can do bad by myself. I don't want to be in slavery. Ain't nobody going to. 
obey. I ain't obeying nobody. And so they just, they just miss everything. Why? Because they don't know the word. Why? Because we have a chance to demonstrate the word and the word to be manifested through our life. And we do, like I always say, we're slopping it up. We're just all over the place. We're doing all kinds of stuff. So we have to understand that as Christian men and women, as husband and wife, we have got to always remember that we're to submit to one another, but then we are also to do what God told us to do in his word. Now, let's go to, let, let me just say this before, before we go to verse 22. Cleaving to or sticking to is an unconditional commitment to permanency in marriage. To be glued, joined together for life. So when you cleave, that means that we have a commitment and a permanency in marriage. You don't, oh my God, you don't have prenuptial agreements. You, you don't have stuff built in to where, you know, if this don't work out, if this don't happen. You have to understand that we're in this for life. Read the story of the eagles. Eagles stay married for life. They're committed to one another for life. And so we are in a marriage and we're to stick together. We're glued together. We're joined together for life. Without such a permanent bond, best friendship and marriage will eventually disintegrate. Superficial companionships are the best for which we can hope. And we got a lot of people walking around pretending, a lot of Christians walking around pretending. We got pastors and bishops and apostles and evangelists walk around pretending that they have a great marriage and 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 boy let me tell you don't 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 follow them home and it's not because and, and let me just let me just say this most of this is because we have not been taught okay this ministry is in effect in place because in my growing up in the body of Christ, I saw so many divorces in leadership. And anytime they talked about family relationship or husband and wife relationship, it was maybe once a year, a special program, and that was it. And so if you're getting, if you're getting fed once a year about a, uh, about a mar about marriage relationship and, and family relationship, guess what kind of life you're going to have? And guess what the enemy like? He loves that. He loves the fact that Christian marriages, husband and wife, can't get along. Let me tell you another thing that you really have to watch out. And I, and I had to be on guard. And I had to, this is something that I experienced. When you're in leadership in the body of Christ, we have great responsibility. Okay? So there's a tendency to leave our families out. We're serving God. We're being a blessing to other folks. God has anointed us to do so many things and touch so many lives. And, but, but, but we have to remember that we have our first family is our first, is our wife, is our children. That's who you take care of. Because if your wife is all over the place or your husband is all over the place and your kids are downtown in jail, okay, or they down, or, 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 or they across town doing God knows what, and 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 people seeing it. What kind of light do you think, and what kind of effect do you think that's having on the ministry that God has called you to? So you have to understand that we have to practice what we preach, and so what has to happen is we have to focus on our own life. See, before I say anything, it's amazing how people walk up to me and I've never seen them before, and they just read my they read my mail. They just say, you such and such and such, and so and so and so. And I'm looking at them like, you don't even know me. You know why? They pick up the spirit. They, they, they know. They know. And so, and so we have to make sure that we have ourselves together and we're practicing before we even say anything. Because people, people whether they're saved or not, they discern and they know if you're doing what you're telling them. And so we have to be examples first. And we have to, and this is my commitment. My commitment is to my family, that I must love my family, that I must love my wife like Christ told me to love her. And I've got to do according to his will concerning, uh, concerning my seed. And when I do that, the conviction as I speak and minister to others will be there. And conviction help people to change. See, to not 
to not be convicted means that they'll hear you, but they won't change. And so you got to be convicted, convicted, convinced. When people hear you talk about the word of God, they have to be convinced in their heart. That's what happened on the day of, uh, 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 after Pentecost when Peter was down there preaching to them folks and he preached the 3,000. I mean, 3,000 souls came to the church. They said, men and brethren, what should we do? I mean, we heard you talk, Peter. Now, what's next? What do we do? They were convicted. They said, look, I hear what you're saying. I believe it. What's the next step? And that's how we want to live. We want to live so that when we talk to people, they will say, what is the next step? What's the next step? What do you want me to do? And so we have to understand that verse 22 says, you wise must submit, give to, yield to, surrender to, and offer yourself to your husband's leadership in the same way. How? How do you do that? In the same way you submit to the Lord. Say a wife, a woman, a married woman cannot submit to a husband if she's not submitting to the Lord. Because the Bible says she is submit to him just like she would submit to the Lord. Here again, I tell you, you got to have a relationship, got to have a personal relationship. So if, you, if you're the type of wife and you do what you want to do when you want to do it and, and you're always trying to have your way and so on and so forth, you're going to be in trouble. It's going to be hard. You, you, you're not going to, you're going to pretend that's what you're going to do. Verse, look, look what verse 23 says. All right. And I want you to recognize and go back to verse 22. It says, in the same way you submit to the Lord. It says, for the husband is in charge of his wife in the same way Christ is in charge of his body in the church. He gave his very life to take care of it and to be its savior. Look at this now. But it's, it says, for a husband is in charge of his wife in the same way Christ is in charge of his body. So now, so now the husband has a responsibility to be in charge of his wife a certain way. How? Like Christ was in charge of the church. Aha. Oh, look at there. So she has to submit like she submits to the Lord, but you got to be in charge like Christ is in charge of the church. In charge, that means at the helm. That means in command, in control. All right, that is influences. He manages, he oversees, he superintends, he watches over. That's what Christ does for the church. Okay, she so says, verse 24, so you, so you wives must be willing to obey your husbands in everything just as the church obeys Christ. So there has to be a good relationship going on. Husbands, you have to know and study the ways of Christ. You have to know how he treated the church. Otherwise, you're not going to know how to treat your wife. Side notes to the husband. If you want your wife to obey you in everything, you had better be taking care of her like Christ takes care of the church. I'm going to say that again. Because we love to say, especially the old school guy, you know, you're supposed to do what I say. You're supposed to obey me because the Bible, because the Bible said that you're supposed to obey me. Uh, 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 you're supposed to do what I say. So you wives must be willing to obey your husband in everything just as Christ obeys the uh, uh, just as the church obeys Christ and so you have to understand and I'm going to get tough you have to understand husbands that we are to be connected and do things like Christ told us to do all right nobody even your wife is willing to follow a loser or somebody that's all over the place and just making up stuff as they go and have no wisdom and has no relationship. And every time you turn, they turn, every time your wife turn around, you put them in a bind. Every time you turn around, they, they, they don't know how, where the next meal coming from. Every time you turn around, they're afraid to make any decision because you got them all tanked. Don't you understand the church is free in Christ Jesus? Don't you understand that Christ loved us so much that he's given us the opportunity uh, to make up our own minds, to serve him, and to do the things that we need to do? We, we, we have to understand it. You, you're not... A, didn't you just hear me say that in charge means that you're in command, that you influence, that you, you ain't said nothing about making nobody do anything? 
It ain't saying nothing about shaming anybody. And God forbid if you put your hands on them, have you lost your mind? Do you see Christ beating the church? He died for the church. Why would he turn around and beat it? Say, I'm about to get in trouble. I'm coming back. He's not going to turn around and beat the church. He loves the church unconditionally. He's responsible. He is responsible for getting us from earth to glory. And so we have to understand that we have a great responsibility. I'm going to say this and we're going to close out. He says, and you husbands, show the same similar, identical kind of love to your wife as Christ showed to the church when he died for her. The agape type love to make her holy and clean, washed by baptism in God's word. We're going to come back and we're going to immediately start at verse 24. Okay? We're going to start at verse 24. Um, and we might start at 23. But I want you to understand that in these times, husband and wife and children, but particularly husband and wife, two companies merging together become one flesh. We have, we've got to make sure that we operate together. That we, and see, becoming best friends and sticky friends, that mean we've got to spend an awful lot of time together. And now we have, we have the opportunity to do so because we're coming out of this. And when we come out of this, not only do we want to be strong, but we want to be fruitful and we want to multiply. And we want to increase the kingdom of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, and we pray that these messages will penetrate our hearts and minds, that we may be, be, be victorious and that when we speak to others, they may be convicted. And that your grace and your mercy and your Shekinah glory and all that good will be imparted to them as they listen. Now, Lord God, give them a plan and give them the ability to carry out what you've spoken in your word. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.